Okay. First, uh, I would like uh, to thank you for joining the session and I hope you are all safe and your families. Uh, the reason I uh, prepared this workshop was just for like utilizing the times that we have right now. I know that we may don't have the same chance again, and I hope we will never have it again because it's a very, very un un uh, abnormal circumstances. And I know that it will take a few days and then we'll get back to our work and our lives the same way it was. But I think this is a very good opportunity instead of keep sitting in front of the news or keep uh, following up the news, which is not that good in Facebook. Let's utilize the times that we have right now to enhance our skills in a short time of period. Actually, I, I plan to uh, do a few workshops. Today going to be the first one just to enhance our skills, to gain some new skills in a way that after this crisis, we learn something. At least we can we utilize the time in a better way. <clears throat> so today it's about planning. What should we do uh, during those weeks? Uh, how can we utilize the time to enhance our skills? So. I'm going to talk about planning. How should we plan? The objective of this workshop is to explain or to plan to get some cyber security skills in a short period of time. Now, the way that we are doing it in normal circumstances by taking courses and taking uh, lectures and taking certificate, it's good, but it's not effective. It's taking time. It's taking effort. When you study a course like, for instance, Security Plus, which is a, it's a big course, actually, a lot of definitions, a lot of concepts. And then you sit for the exam and you take the certificate. But if you go to an interview using the skills that you know from an official training, it's not enough to get you a real job. And getting the certificate is good, but it's not enough. It's not like if you are CISP certified or CS certified and you apply for a job, they will hire you right away. No, they will ask you about some skills. They will ask you about some knowledge. And you need to show them or to, to uh, uh, prove that you already know how to do the skills. So my plan is to change the way that we are preparing ourselves or we are gaining uh, into the cybersecurity field in a different way. So let me explain to you what is my plan uh, and how we can utilize that during those weeks. I have a document, I believe it's quite important, and you can download this document from for free from my website, infosec4tc.com. I will show you from where you can download it. This is called the scale matrix. And actually, a lot of organizations have a matrix like that. Skill matrix, it's just to identify that is needed, to identify the skills needed in different uh, uh, jobs. So as you can see below, I wrote the most common cybersecurity job, penetration tester, information security specialist, uh, system, security system uh, administration. Most of the common or the uh, jobs in cybersecurity that has high demand. And then I listed all the skills that may need it in this job. Okay, I got that from different jobs website. Indeed, uh, four or five of the major website I searched and I start getting what are the skills needed in uh, this specific jobs. My point here is instead of studying and preparing randomly, let's focus about some point that we need to get skills related to those uh, items and make sure we practice them very well, we understand them very well, and we are comfortable to write down in our CV or resume that we know how to do vulnerability assessment or uh, security assessment or risk assessment. Or So the point here is to get yourself ready, but in a different way. And I will explain to you 
you know, the shortest path for doing that. So as I told you, I have this document and you can like, you can uh, modify it. You can add more skills or less skills, but actually this is like a basic document that I have where I listed all the skills needed. Forget about the certificate and so on. Let's talk about the skills that we need to learn in different positions. But before deciding about which job position you're gonna apply for, you need to identify your background. Now, in my courses and people who are like uh, register and enroll in different courses, they came from different backgrounds. Some of them came from a network background. They used to be a network administrator or system administrator, and they decided to move to cybersecurity. Some of them came uh, from a non-technical background, and they want to move to cybersecurity. Some of them came, uh, or they are college uh, student, and they want to get themselves, uh, themselves ready. So once they graduated, they'll be able to find a job. So you need to identify what skills you have or what is your background and what position is more suitable to your background okay the good thing about cybersecurity is that it's not a technical field it has place for all uh, uh, backgrounds so if you are from a network background you can fit in one of the positions related to cybersecurity if you don't have a technical background you can fit in things related to administrative security policy procedures compliance standard if you are a college uh, student you can focus on the point that you are more comfortable with development network uh, uh, architecture whatever and decide about that i actually recommend the penetration the information security specialist which is not really a technical you need to have some technical background but not that deep because people who are working in information security specialist or consulting uh, they need to understand some concept, but they are not the one who's doing it. They need to understand what is the firewall, but they are not the one who are setting and configure the firewall or setting and configure the policy. But they know what needs to be done and they are forwarding that to the right team. So <clears throat> you can check all the position, but from my point of view, this is one that is more realistic and the ones that you can like gain skills within short period of time. But still, if you felt comfortable about penetration testing, which is also a very good field, uh, and you are studying ethical hacking, you can focus on that as well. Uh, security administrator, check different uh, position. And what you'll notice that a lot of those skills are common between the different position. So vulnerability assessment, you're going to find the skills needed for information security specialist and needed for penetration tester and needed. So there is a lot of common skills between the different positions. One more point that I would like to focus on is that when you open a, 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 like a job position or a posting, most of the company, when they post a position, they will ask of a lot of requirements. Like information security specialist sees the amount of like... Uh, skills that uh, they wrote in the job position but realistically we are not doing all of those so but for any business they are thinking okay let us get someone that can do everything which is actually not realistic so what i'm trying to say you don't have to worry about the amount of skills it's not like that realistically you need to be aware of some of them uh, main or some of the major skills okay so the first step is to identify your goal what position is more suitable for you then we're going to start preparing or or learning or enhancing the skills needed for this position but we need to do that in a specific way let me give you an example let's talk vulnerability assessment okay if i ask you to learn vulnerability assessment what are you going to do most people are going to search for a vulnerability assessment tools like Nasus or Rapid7 or any tools. And most of those tools, you can download the trial version for free. They will download the tools and they're going to start studying how to use the tool. How can I run a scan? Where, can, where should I write the IP or IP range? How can I generate a report? And they're going to start focusing about the tools, which is not right. Okay. 
you need to understand the objective or the importance of these tools, whatever tools you are using, or this like uh, skills, what is vulnerability assessment? What is the output of vulnerability assessment? Search online for any vulnerability assessment report, how it look like. Uh, and then you can download the tools and just go through it to understand how to get your uh, target or how to get the information needed from this specific tools. What I'm trying to say is that please do not focus on the technology or on the tools because things keep changing. If you are using NASIS today in any business, after a few days, maybe NASIS uh, expired and this company will use a different tool. So do not focus on a specific tools. Do not focus up because when you go to an interview, they will not ask you about the tools. They may ask you about names, what tools did you use, but they will not ask you in this specific menu, how can you do this or how to change the setting or, or what is the prerequisite? Because anyone, anyone, even if he's not from a security background, if you sit on a computer or you sit in front of a computer that has a tools and you spend few hours, you will be able, you'll be aware on how to use it. So what I'm trying to say, do not focus about tools, focus about the skills, the output, okay? When we do a vulnerability assessment in any organization, we get a report maybe from 20 pages. I will not provide this 20 pages to the technical team. It's useless, they will do nothing, right? But I need to categorize them, what is critical, what is less critical, what is medium, what is low, and then I have to provide them with a critical vulnerability that they need to fix right away. Also, what should be the output? You know, in most cases, when we have interview, we ask people, okay, what is usually the result of vulnerability assessment? The most common results in business is patching. You know, you get these tools, you get to know about Windows patching, what patching is missing, what critical patching is missing for Windows, for applications that is used and so on. So you need to study the vulnerability from a business perspective, not academic study, not to understand, yes, vulnerability assessment is to do one, two, three, four, five. No, you need to understand what is needed for a business from these tools. Why they are spending money buying a tool like that? And what should I get as an output? You got my point? It's quite important to, to learn that in this specific way. Search for real vulnerability assessment report on the internet. Uh, search on my courses or even on YouTube, search a vulnerability assessment. Uh, what is the role or what is the importance of having vulnerability assessment? What is the report? How should I write a vulnerability? Because it's not to generate a vulnerability assessment tools a report, a vulnerability assessment report, and use it the default way and give it to your management or to the IT department. You have to modify it to be more effective. So this is what I'm asking you to do. Study the tool from a business perspective, the skills from a business perspective. Do not focus about the tools. Once you study about vulnerability assessment and you see the report and you see different template and different report, then you can download any tools from the internet. NASIS, Rapid7, NetExpose, any of those tools, most of them has a free uh, version on their website and then create a virtual machine and run a vulnerability assessment and get a report and try to customize it the same way you saw in different template and in different report. This will help you to understand the concept. And if you get a question about that in an interview, what is the vulnerability assessment? How frequently we are doing it? We are doing it. Uh, what is the output of this report? At least you'll be able to understand and reply back about the tools, okay? So those are skills related to technology. So for instance, we have the data leakage prevention, uh, or uh, some people call it data loss prevention, which is the DLP, for instance. Okay, Forget about the technologies that they are talking about because there is a lot of DLP. So you, you start searching, what is a DLP? It's a software that prevent data to be leaked. I mean, if you install it and you have a sensitive, sensitive document, you will not be able to copy it on a flash drive. You will not be able to copy it 
send it by email. So how can I use this tool? Is there any pre-request, uh, guys? Uh, please, uh, please mute your mics so it will not disturb uh, anyone. Uh, to be able to use the DLP, we need to use a data classification tools. So what are the common data classification? And start studying the most 10 common data classification tool or DLP tool or vulnerability assessment tools. So what I'm trying to say here is that we need to change the way we are getting ourselves ready, not by studying the full course. I mean, it's good to study full courses and read a lot of books, it's good. But my objective is, can we, within two weeks, get ourselves ready with some major cybersecurity skills? Yes, we can. And for me, I'll, I will provide a lot of templates and a lot of documents related to those specific skills that may help you as an additional tool. Actually, I'll, I'll upload them on the student portal for to be easier to reach. <clears throat> so this is my plan regarding preparing ourselves in uh, cyber, different cybersecurity skills. So you need to identify your background, what is the most suitable position uh, for you, and then identify what skills you are aware of. You can add here one more column and give yourself a rate. Okay, in this vulnerability assessment, I am one over 10. While this one, I am five over 10. I used this technology before. So you can identify the weakest, the weakness uh, you have and the strongest or uh, the skills that you are familiar with and according to that, work on that. So instead of, uh, instead of working randomly, no, we're gonna focus now, get the skills, utilize all the resources available on the student portal. And I will be, I'll be doing different workshops related to different topics. I mean, if you can help me, if you all agree about one topic that we need to workshop about, We'll do it. I'm planning to do a risk assessment for the ISO project this week. Very, very important topic. If you know how to do a risk assessment, if, if you are even familiar with risk assessment and how it's, it's done, this is a very, very good skills to learn. So I'll do different workshop, but it will be some additional help. But things need to be initiated from your side. Plan, okay? Uh, this is actually... I know the situation is not that good and you know everyone is this depressed and the news is it's it's not uh, the thing to watch right now so sit in front of your computer take one topics and run or 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 go through it from different perspective from a business perspective focus on that what kind of question i have a very good document i'll search for it and i'll send it to you which has the most common interview question uh, so you will get to know what questions they are usually asking about vulnerability assessment. And according to that, you can uh, know or identify what are the skills that I need to learn to be able to answer those questions. So this is the first point. Okay, Our sessions are around 30 minutes, then we're going to take, take minute, uh, 10 minutes in case you have any questions. Now, from where I, I, I actually I get those skills related to position from jobs website. And there is a lot of job website, but I, I actually prefer this one, which is Indeed. You can search for a job in a city, in a specific country, or by name. So if you write information security specialist or penetration tester, or you will get a lot of position and then you can compare or you can check what is the skills common in all the related position. So you can search if you are not able to find a suitable job for you in this skill matrix, you can even search uh, for different position. But you're gonna find those common skills, most of them are common in, in the most information security or cyber security position. By the way, to be able to get the skill matrix, which I'm gonna frequently update it, uh, it. You can go to my website, infosec 4 tc and go to free resources. And from free resources, you can download it from uh, free resources. Uh, you will find it in this page, which is, where is it? Cybersecurity skill metrics, as you can see. Okay. 
This is the first point, which is planning for our career enhancement. Okay, identifying the skills that you need to learn. Do not study the normal way right now. Do not spend long time reading and reading definition. No, just focus about points that you need to identify. Then, one of the website that also can help you identify the skills. And not just uh, not just identifying the skills, but even if you plan to work in the same field, but as a freelancer, it's Upwork. It's a very, very good website for freelancer. This website has two different benefits. First, if you search for a specific position, you'll understand what skills they need to have to be able to work as a freelancer in this position. And it's a website, the website can be used to get some real life experience. I, I, I mean, let's assume that you learn vulnerability assessment, you learn risk assessment, you learn, learn administrative security. Okay, and you went to an interview and you are able to answer all the questions, right? You understand exactly the skills and what kind of knowledge you will be getting and how the report, everything is fine with you you still miss one point, which is the real life experience. Okay, now one of the things that you can do, you can create an account here and write down all the skills that you can provide and you can start taking tasks. It's not about money, you'll be getting paid, but it's about real involvement, providing real service to a company. And you don't have to worry because if you do an assignment and the customer is not satisfied, he will not pay you. You didn't lost anything but at least you know now that this task you are not doing it the right way it should be done in a different way so you can get some real, real life experience from it besides as i told you it's a, it's a very good place to uh, provide paid services related to cyber security so if you search for instance for penetration testing okay people who are who are providing freelancing penetration testing at least you get to know how much they get paid what kind of skills they have so for instance you can find many one here and for instance let's see this guy is taking 110 dollar per hour okay let's see his profile so we'll get to know what skills he have network security network administration and a brief description about him and as you can see, you know, he did quite well. He's, this is his earning so far. And he delivered 115 hours. So if things get bad and we have to stay for a while at home, at least there is a place where you can post a position and you can do some freelancing and you can end up with some income. So to summarize, let's plan by identifying a specific job, skills needed for this job, practice those skills very well from a business perspective, identify what are the output of the skills, how we can uh, get uh, practice that, create a small virtual lab, couple of virtual machines. So if you need to practice software, if you need to practice a tool, do not focus about the utilization of the tools, do not memorize the memory or the setting. It's not about that. It's about the tools will give you output. I want you to focus about the output. What are you gaining from the output? This is the summarization of our meeting. Try to create an account of on Upwork. Uh, uh, search on this one. See for people who's doing similar job remotely, what skills they need. Enhance your skills. Okay. <clears throat> one last point. One of the things also that can be a very good asset in your background, it's to get familiar with the compliance and regulation and policy. Spend some time, read about it. This is very suitable for you if you don't have that much of technical background, but at least you get to know about the policy, the standard, the compliance. If you are working in a hospital, which standard you are following and how can I transfer that to some controls? If you are working in a government, what standards they are following? So spend some time about that because again, it's not a technical field. It's a full generic field where you are implementing technical, physical, administrative, and so on. 
And from my side, I'm going to do a few workshops talking about one of, some of the major skills, things that you may need some assistance if you are new to the field, showing you some tools, showing you some, some report. Besides, I'm going to upload some template to the student portal that may help you doing that. But still, all the effort needs to be done from your side. So you need to, if you are convinced with that, I'm sure that within a couple of weeks, you can really get ready. It will make big difference in your life. You can write in your CV that you know to, how to do, instead of just writing things that you are copying them from, from, from Google or from searching, at least you are writing something that you are comfortable if you get a question in any interview or uh, something like that. So this was my uh, brief about planning for enhancing our skills. And uh, feel free if you have any question, we have like 10 minutes, please let me know if you have any question. Okay, I have a question about the certification. This is a very good question. Certification, it's very important, but it's not enough. Okay, and let's be let's be honest about it. Getting a certification is not hard. Even the most tough cert CISP. CISSP has tricks. If you understand the tricks, you can take that in two, three weeks. It do not reflect real knowledge, okay? But it's a must, okay? We know we saw many people driving car, right? And they have a driving license. Is all people driving good? Is all people driving the same? So getting a certificate, it's like getting a license. It's just reflecting that you know some basics, but it do not reflect that you are a very good driver. Same in cybersecurity, okay? You should plan for certificates. This is a must, okay? But eventually you will get certificate. Any certificates that you want to get, it's not hard to get. Some of them is quite easy, actually, quite easy. And some of them may take some effort, but it's doable and quite easy. But it should not be your objective why you are getting the certificate in the first place to get a decent job or to uh, to uh, be promoted or get a better position where you are working right now so getting certificate it's important and you have to get it but most important it's to really understand the skills okay now most of the trainings they are giving you the skills but they are giving you the let's say the basic knowledge about those skills i mean vulnerability assessment it's covered in many courses but if i ask any of you what are the output in the important output of a vulnerability assessment what are the different tools that are used in vulnerability assessment and the a comparison between them okay so many people they know what is vulnerability assessment but they never did it before so yes, you should have a certificate, but it should not be your priority. Uh, Abrar, you are asking, how can I mention the skills in my CV without of certificate? No, I'm just saying that one more time. I'm telling you, you have to hold certificate, but also you have to have some real experience related to those skills, okay? And let me repeat that again. If you have a certificate, let's assume that you have CISSP and you apply for a job. CISSP is the highest certificate in information security. Do you think they will hire you just because you hold certificate? What do you think? Definitely not, but they will interview. Certificate will facilitate your, your, your way. At least they will call you for interview, but it's not enough. So yes, you should have a certificate, but it's not your priority. You should have it. You should not start sending your CV without a certificate, but you should also learn how to understand or how to, to, to get familiar with those skills very well. <clears throat> okay, uh, I am from a network security background. I plan cybersecurity, it's fine. At least you start by identifying the suitable job for you if you came from a network security background. Is it a network security admin? Is it a, 
uh, network security architecture is it at least start by identifying the common job related to your background and then what are the skills needed and start preparing yourself and getting yourself familiar with uh, those skills hello sam how are you okay any more question uh, master degree in cyber security plus cissp it's good you know getting the academic plus the professional is the ideal solution but again this is not my focus okay again i'm saying that do not skip your master degree do not skip your cisp continue doing what you are doing but since this is going to take time i'm just want you to focus about the real practice it's like you are getting an opportunity to go and practice somewhere okay if you get an opportunity to go and practice uh, in a company do you think they're going to start asking you academic question no they will give you a product they will give you a solution they will give you a task to do so this is what i'm talking about uh, what should i get next to get a job you don't need to do anything if you get a job you get a job that's it <laughs> so this is the 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 final aim the final target you are most welcome thank you so much and uh, as i told you if this was successful today's session was successful we may do some more workshop talking about one of those skills showing how it's done real tools but again you know you need to do some effort it's not just creating workshop and talking and that's it if someone is serious about that definitely i'll provide all my help and all my support okay guys it will it it, it was great talking to you and uh, uh, start by planning uh, uh, download this uh, skill matrix take notes start uh, identifying your weakness start identifying what resources do you need do not study like college or school no be more focused and uh, i think uh, we can do within a couple of weeks getting skill realistic skills realistic business skills for people who are joining my project for iso 27001 I'm preparing for uh, uh, a meeting next week for risk assessment and uh, KPIs. I think it will be quite useful. Uh, and I wish uh, you all safety for you and your families. Uh, thank you so much and take care. Thank you. Yeah, by the way, the uh, lecture has been uh, or the workshop has been recorded and I'm going to send it to all of you. Thank you.